Hello, Double Salute. Welcome back to the channel. The first video in such a long time, but well worth the wait for all three of you. What better video could I have done to have started back than what I'm about to do and what you're about to hear. This is a very, very special guitar and I've been waiting a long time to play it, so I'm very, very excited. In fact, I wasn't meant to shoot today, like film and record. And I just, I picked up, played it acoustically, and I was like, I need to set up and do this. So before we get into the specs of this guitar and a little bit about it, um, the way I'm going to do the next series of videos, yes, I'm actually going to record some videos and release them, you're going to hear a very short bit of jam into a jam track, uh, like a backing track. Um, the backing track is from Anderton's TV, recorded, written, all rights reserved to Pete Anore, uh, Danish Pete. Uh, this one is called Gear Stick Rider in G minor. Um, I bought this off of their Bandcamp, so please go over to Bandcamp and you know, support them. The backing tracks are brilliant. There's timestamps if I've managed to work it out, so you can skip to different bits of the video. But yeah, you know, grab a drink. These always go on way longer than I want them to. Um, you can hear a bit of the jam track. We'll go over the specs a little bit about what the guitar is, because you have not seen a guitar identical to this before i'm pretty confident that would be weird if you had um for you cannot just go into a shop and buy one of these um, but we're going to get into all of that um after a little bit of a jam track and i'll do some close-ups of the guitar during the jamming so you don't need to look at this um so please enjoy i haven't played guitar in a long time so also please be kind bear with me and i'll be back chatting in about a minute or so you survived my playing it's been a while i really need to get back into practicing but we are back and hopefully that gave you a little bit of an indication of each of the pickup selectors i will say that i struggle sometimes to get a good sound out of software i was using amplitude so i've called for that and you know it, i plug this into my amp it sounds killer i just don't have a microphone to make up my amp maybe I could do a follow-up at some point but hopefully it still sounded good it sounds great to me and we're going to go through Lots of specs here. If you hear rustling, that's my cat in our tunnel. It's over there. It's professional. Got lots of specs to run through here. Um, but before we do that, this guitar, what is it? This is called the Beacon Drop Top. Now this guitar is custom built. 
by Ben McGinty um, at Lighthouse Instruments. Um, I think that's the Instagram tag. I'll put it in the description. Um, I'm filming on my phone, so I can't even look it up on that. And I'm not logged into Instagram here. Anyway, um, do check them out. It's the description to everything Ben does. Yeah, it's a guitar lover's dream to go onto his uh, social media and check out everything. So this is one of these guitars that he has built. And for a very long time, I've been wanting a shot of it. Um, and I'm glad to see that time has finally arrived. Um, I'm off work, as I said at the start of the video, or maybe I didn't, don't remember. Um, so yeah, hopefully you enjoy this as much as the enjoyment I'm going to get out of this guitar. The scale length of this guitar is 25 and a half inch. Got that? Um, it is book matched American flamed and burrow maple drop top. And a sapel, sapel, sapelli, sapelli body. Now, again, I've done close-ups of this. I'm aware that the, the light is reflecting on it, but really it is, it is stunning. And when he says book matched, he is not joking. Like, it is, it is absolutely stunning. Um, I'll do close-ups that isn't blinding. The cat's looking at me, wondering I'm talking to myself. But it is, it's just beautiful. Um, now you only, you're only going to get so much from looking at the video. You've got to feel it. It feels, uh, it's got a good weight to it. It's not unbelievably heavy, but it, is, it has got a fair weight. I was looking to see if you put the weight on it. I thought I may have. Um, but it's, it's got a fair heft. It, it feels reassuring in the hands is what I'll say. Um, but yeah, just that body itself. Obviously we know the shape is akin to a certain <coughs> uh, Mr. Smith um, brand. Um, not a shape that I've ever opted to ever want to buy. Maybe changing my mind. The biggest travesty here is I can't keep this guitar. It's just for a demo. Um, yeah, it is lovely. Um, again, close-ups you'll be seeing all of the wood here. So the neck timber, again, is that Sapele uh, American Hard Maple African Rosewood Laminate Neck. Um, you can see there's all these little sandwiched pieces of wood on the neck. And you know, Ben's done a brilliant job of, of, you know, getting everything looking, lined up and looking amazing. It, it really is brilliant. It really is brilliant. Uh, the neck profile, so it's a set neck as you've seen in the photos, vintage, thick, deep sea, and it is, and it's the kind of neck that I like on a guitar. Um, it's just, it's not super massive, massive, but it's, oh yeah, reassuring as well. Um, oh yeah, is the, is the sound I've chose to do there. Um, it feels good in the neck, uh, it feels good in the neck, it feels good in the hand, it feels good in the neck as well. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's actually really nice. Um, but it, it feels nice. It's, it's my kind of guitar neck as well. Um, what else have we got? The fretboard is made, made of Ziracote. Ziracote? I've never heard of that. Is that a type of wood? Oh, obviously. Um, it's beautiful. It is really, really beautiful. Uh, what else to say? Uh, 12 inch radius. Um, that'll be why I get on with it so well. Um, I'm a Les Paul fan. I've got Les Pauls, lots of Gibsons. Uh, do I have lots of Gibsons. I like lots of Gibsons. Uh, 24 stainless steel modern narrow frets. And this is my second stainless steel guitar, a uh, fretted guitar. You'll never need to replace these bad boys. Bad boys. Uh, yeah, but the wood in the neck, again, you'll see close-ups of this. It is, it is stunning. You know, this lighter patch over the first five frets is just, it really is beautiful. It is a work of art. I was going to say you almost feel bad playing it, but you don't because it's a guitar and guitars should get played. Right, where have we got? Inlay, we've got brass fret markers and brass side dots, sapelli and brass beacon inlay on the headstock, which again is stunning and just you know, a testament to the time and effort and attention to detail that Ben's put in. You, you, you know, you didn't he didn't need to do a headstock that intricate and you know but it, it looks it looks stunning um i love the truss rod cover as well i think that's really nice um i guess it's brass 
I'm jumping ahead. Yeah, but the inlays are, are actually, they're lovely. Um, as I said, brass uh, fret markers and side dots. Um, they look great. The fretwork as well is lovely. It was a Philip McKnight with the tights. I don't have a pair of tights. Um, but there's, I mean, that's a, it's a strong pass. Uh, the tuners are Grover Rot Rotomatics 102 Series Nickel. Uh, Grover's great tuners. I'd done a lot of takes of jamming at the beginning by that backing track because I am terrible at playing guitar, it seems, and can't do anything. But um, it didn't go out of tune while I was playing that, so. Still not out of tune. Um, so that's great, great tuners, we know Grovers. The bridge and the tailpiece are shallower, is a shallower vintage tremolo. Now you'll notice I've not done any wiggle action. Um, I don't, um, I don't use them when they're on guitars. Um, I know it's going to work well. Uh, shallow, it's great, great uh, hardware. Um, it's brilliant. Um, nice big old block in the back. Nice thick block. It's, it's just, it's great, and I know it will work. Um, but I don't use wiggle stickage on any guitar that I've ever bought that has one, so I'm not going to do it in this one. I'm going to treat it the same as I would treat any guitar that I play and buy. This is where it gets exciting, because we know that wood and every, all that doesn't, it's nothing to do with tone, right? These though, these are the pickups. Now these are number 19 pickups. Um, Parkhurst Guitars is the name of the company, isn't it? Um, Jake Parkhurst. Um, I've got a set of uh, number 19, I was going to say P90s, but we're, we're getting on to that. Number 19 pickups in my Gibson Les Paul. I got the burst burkers out of there and put a set of uh, the Confluence pickups that he's got in there and it sounds great. In fact, there's a video of that up there or it's up there. I can't remember. Um, so these are number 19 P90 raw nickel set with a matching single coil placed closer to the neck pickup. So as he actually said that to me outside, that's me just noticed it. Is that some purpose? Yeah, so these are P90s here. You might have thought they were humbuckers on first glance, but they are P90s and they snarl. We'll get to that um, later. Um, but yeah, great, like a P90, single P90. It's a great setup, you know. You've got your five way, one, two, three, four, five. And so it's like, like a, a heart, oh, I'm gonna say like a, a modded, beefy Stratocaster. The P90 sound great. It makes great pickups at number 19 and they're actually, they're not super expensive either compared to what you can buy from other larger manufacturers. And they do sound brilliant. I think the, the humbuckers I've got brilliant. I think these sound brilliant too. Electronics, for those that want to know, again, this time stamps if you want to skip this whole bit. Two 500k ohm CTS log pots. That's a thing, it's a good thing. I know, I know what that is, I know CTS spots. Uh, five way switchcraft blade, of course. Um, one times 0.022 UF capacitor and one times 470k ohm resistor. That'll mean more to you maybe than it does to me. Um, but they're, they're super high quality parts. You know, switchcraft, CTS pots. And the finish, um, Ben describes as a subtle desert burst using Keda dyes mixed from pigment and build up um, a melamine lacquer finish. Melamine, mel melamine lacquer finish. It looks great. He was saying to me when he dropped it off that it almost looks like it was kind of been relic. There is a few bumps and stuff in it. And, you know, other people have demoed this and played it and, and gigged it, I think, as well. Um, I, I think it looks brilliant. Like, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything about it if I had the money. Um, to purchase said guitar, um, I wouldn't change anything, I wouldn't get anything touched up, I think it looks brilliant. Um, I like, I just like it, I like it all, and I'm so happy that I do because I'm sure Ben will also be happy that I do, but uh, I've been wanting to try it for so long and seen it getting built and as it went and progressed and the guitar show down the Great British Guitar Show, whatever it's called, you know, China Guitar Skeptic and all that. You know, the, oh, Ben's guitar went down there and, you know, cool people much better than me played it and done better videos on it. Cat's just about to cause, hey, 
Sorry, the cat was causing havoc, getting up to mischief. Um, yeah, much better people than me have played it, so it's, it's an honour to play it. Um, it's the first ever one-off, custom-built, handmade guitar I've really played. I own Gibson guitars and I've owned lots of guitars, but this this is this is the guitar that's had the most effort put in, I would say. Is that a rude thing to say? Um, the volute in the neck, we never mentioned here at the headstock. Love a volute. Because it's a good word. So we're going to go through the tones. We're going to start the neck pickup, we're going to work our way down. We're just in logic. Amazing tweed is the sound that we're on. Just a nice clean tone to get the pure sound of the amp, of the amp, of the guitar. Okay, so this is neck pickup. Everything's at 10. We'll play around with them in a minute. Everything's just so, in fact, I'm going to turn the noise gate off. Everything's got a noise gate on it in Logic. Position two or position four, depending on what way you kind of want to go. Um, just some of these two together. Get that instantly a bit more in the high end there. Position, just a single coil, I think. Yeah. A great position that uh, uh, underused, I would say. All that all day long, one more down, position two or four, whatever you want. These two together. Oh, that's a bit different, yeah. You're getting that warm for the P90 that still has that bite. Hopefully, you're getting that. I'm getting it. Trust my word. <laughs> it sounds lovely. It, it really does. Cross, right and right on to the P90. Whoa, even that. That's where it's at for me. Super artic articulate, <laughs> unlike me. It 
is lovely. Let's get let's get the tone down. just on 10. Uh, talking of that, I think it's time to do a bit of dirty tones. Because um, these P90s need to scream. Um, this one P90s will work best for me. Um, let's get some dirty tones. Okay, so we're back and we're going to get some a little bit of a dirtier tone, as dirty as I usually go. So we're going to abuse these P90s so everything's on full. such a plethora of tones here, so that's the neck pack. Move for these neck and single. Just gives you a bit more spank right away. in the video you know from using plugins instead of making up an amp I will try and get a mic soon and do maybe another video at some point in the future uh, where I've mic'd it up I find it much easier to get a better sound out of the amp than the software world I kind of get a bit lost but I think it sounds good in the room at least so hopefully that translates to you as well watching it on your phone or laptop or whatever your tv man my face on your tv that's quite scary um I want to wrap up just by saying, you know, it's an honour to be able to have played this. It was, as I said, at the Boutique Guitar Festival in England, these guitars, Ben's guitars, 
much better people than me have played these. <laughs> um, but it is an honour that Ben, you know, at least humoured me enough to let me do a video on it as well. Um, so hopefully we can get some good views on this video, some likes on this YouTube channel. Subscribe, do you know what I mean? I've got more planned to come out soon. M more terrible playing for you and lots of stupid chat. Um, please do check out Ben at Lighthouse Instruments and you know, support local luthiers, at least local to me and us in Scotland. But, you know, support independent people that are really knocking their pan in to make great instruments, you know. And it's a love, and if you love guitars, you can appreciate that this is, is this is a workhorse guitar. Um, but it's also, you know, it's like a piece of art, you know, as well. I love guitars as objects, you know, playing aside. Just the craftsmanship that goes into something like this, you know, as I talked about, you know, the headstock logo, you know, having woods, you know, there and the brass inlays and, you know, the, that faux binding that goes round, it's just stunning and I really do wish I could just keep it. <laughs> but no, it's been a pleasure to play it. Hopefully you think it, you've enjoyed the video and you've got a taste for what it sounds like, you've enjoyed the close-ups. Um, I think it's brilliant. I can't wait to see what else Ben creates and hopefully he lets me play them all unless he absolutely hates this video, in which case, you know, I probably would be invited to play another guitar again. Please subscribe to the channel, check out the other videos, check out again number 19 pickups as well, which are in this, uh, Parkhurst Guitars, I think their name is, um, as far as I'm aware. Uh, all links in description. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. I'm just not happy with the sound at all. I don't know what's going on. I just can't. I'm just not happy with any of it.